Hey, how's it going? Since there's all these new rules on YouTube, I want to make sure I'm sticking to everything so I don't get denied. And so here's a little bit of housekeeping for you to look at. I hope that was sufficient. Whoops. Oh, heck. Just to be clear, though, it says that this is a Spirit TV Critic episode for the 12th of December, 2019. And today I'm going to talk about a movie I just came across today on Netflix. It's one of their originals called In the Shadow of the Moon. And, um, it was, <laughs> it was, it was a good movie. I love my sci-fi, and so it's a story of time travel, and it brought up something that, uh, something I'm sure we've all thought of, or most of us have thought of, or had a discussion about, and that is going back in time to change history, and so... It does what time travel movies do, and it can be somewhat confusing, but, you know, for the switching back and forth from the past to the future, it's actually pretty good on that, where it's not that confusing, which I appreciate, and I'm sure a lot of people will if you hate that, because some people hate that. So look out for that, but don't worry, because it's not, it's really not confusing. I'm I'm just bringing it up so that... It, it's part of it. It does do that sort of moving through time, I'll call it. But it's pretty linear. It's not that hard to follow. And uh, it is about a family, basically, and how events, and I will say just, you know, on my own, through my own filter, is that it uh, also deals with fates uh, of people's lives and... <laughs> it's mystifying for the star, for the, well, not the star, but for the main character whose name, oh my god, I can't believe, oh, Lock, Lockhart, and his first name is <laughs> Detective, <laughs> Detective Lockhart, how's that, maybe his name will come to me, I did not think to write that down, so I can't grab up my notes and look at it, bad me, oh well, <laughs> anyway, Detective Holbrook discovers the there's a series of murders that happen at the beginning of the movie and he's the first to pick out the odd sort of this ain't right details in it and let's be let's just be clear here they're supernatural in a regular world although it doesn't take pay, take place in our time currently, I would say it starts in <clears throat> like the 80s, and uh, it's just interesting because I say this a lot when I when I do these things, these spirit TV reviews or critic reviews, that it doesn't matter really what year it is when you watch it, even if the thing is quite old. It, there are just always echoes through history and where it's like just sort of like repeating itself, recycling. And in this film, even though it's in the 80s, there are stark contrasts to exactly what we're going through right now. And uh, it is, it's just always interesting, I find. And so, oh, and let me just tell you the sniffing, because I know there's been a lot of talk about the president and his sniffing. I am not on inhalants, but what it is, is the, basically, I think even looking at a screen anymore, you're bringing through energy. And when I tune in, <laughs> one of my nostrils always runs. And so that's what that is. <laughs> It's not drugs. It may be crazy, but it ain't drugs. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Echoing of 
history and time. So, yeah, I mean, it's supposed to take place in the 80s at the beginning, and then it goes through the other periods at intervals, and uh, time progresses. And so it's just interesting that the same themes have just been going on and on and on. Like, we just have not worked anything out. <laughs> um but I really enjoyed uh, what they did, and they did have a twist. <laughs> and and I'm laughing because people will associate a twist with M. Night Shyamalan, which I actually don't have so many problems with his stuff as other people do. You know, <laughs> for each to each his own. And so it's it's not a twist that is that hard to discern. In fact, what happened while I was watching it, what happened was <laughs> I kept stopping to take notes. And so I'm just going to see if I can find it easily where I stopped. Okay, here <laughs> in my notes, I'll just read you what I have. Time travel tale mirroring in ways the current socio-political climes we're living in. I halted it at about halted it at about 25 minutes in to observe for the record in Kill. Kill the messenger is Kill comma the messenger is my page on Facebook for anyone that's interested in looking at that. But that's what I'm talking about when I say hill here. Kill here. And for the record is something I do when I want to specifically record something that I... Whatever. When I, when I want to specifically record something for the record. So that's what I'm saying here. I halted it at about 25 minutes in to observe for kill the record in... To observe for the record in kill how my view on... Writing history had been changed since my spiritual awakening, which is another reason why I do this, is to also, for the record, make note of, you know, notable points that I find, notable to me anyway, uh, <clears throat> during this spiritual awakening stuff. So, uh... I'll, I I want to talk about the change a little bit because it ha it pertains to the Spirit TV uh, review and the film itself, and that is, haven't we all kind of discussed or pondered or made a game of whatever of going back in time and fixing some thing in the past? A lot of people will say Hitler, you know, like let's go back and kill Hitler and stop. World War Two or stop the genocide? Well, it wouldn't stop World War Two. I don't think. I don't know. It's that's like a really tangled web, and it did. I don't think it only started because of Hitler. But anyway, you know, people talk about going back and to halting like the genocide and the concentration camps, and him trying to take over the world, and you know, a lot of people suffered and. I don't care what people believed or didn't believe. Let's just say World War II, Hitler, a lot of people suffered all together, you know, in the whole conglomerate of the thing. So, okay, go back in time. And in, 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 this, in the show, they talk about going back in time and stopping the Civil War, which I have said in Kill a few times and a lot of other places where I'm blabbing off that I don't think we've at all healed from that. Like, we got a lot of racial problems. Like, the black people... Oh, my God. I took a poll earlier, and it asked questions like, do you think it's right for black people to have, like, extra help, and do they deserve it because of slavery and institutional racism? And I was having a hard time with that because I'm a little sensitive. Go ahead, call me a snowflake. I'm also a black person that has experienced being a black person in America. And while my personal experience hasn't been too terrible, I have had to look at, witness, hear about from relatives, witness on the news. Not so much... I mean, I've been followed around in stores, but I've also worked in stores where it was my job to follow people around, so I always thought that was kind of amusing. But anyway, let me not digress off into space about that. What I'm trying to get at is is that, yeah, 
I don't think that we have at all healed from the Civil War. I don't think we all understood it then. Like, why whatever happened happened specifically. I think everybody has their own little biases, and they hone in on that, or they find a group, and together they hone, and it just becomes a thickness of an opacity, a bubble that they all live in and, you know, continually tell each other things we enjoy hearing, we're comfortable hearing, and then you get to the point where you can't let in other stuff. And I think that that's become a lot of our problem. All of us. I mean, I have my stuff too. I specifically, though, try to get beyond it, get out of it, because I don't like it. I don't, I don't like the way that we are so hateful of each other, so willing to be you know, threatened by another person for silly reasons, like what our exteriors are doing. Uh, on the inside, all the parts are still the same. But again, biases, we all have them, and they shape us, and we shape our worlds, and we all live in each other's worlds, and we all have to live in them. So it's not just a, oh, it's her world, and we got to live in it. There's some truth to that. But I'm also having to live in everybody else's world, too. So keeping that in mind, I will say that I used to think, sure, go back in time, kill Hitler, or in the case of the movie, to stop, or, you know, in the case of the movie where they're talking about going back in time to stop the Civil War, which, again, we have not healed from, uh... They were going back, and or they're talking about it, and they're speculating on, okay, well, we'll go back and we'll kill Jefferson Davis and, you know, whoever else. Like, Booth killed Lincoln thinking that was going to, I don't know, make slavery come back? Or it was just like, I'm mad at you, and I'm just going to take revenge on your whole life from you? I got, I got views on people killing people, too. <laughs> but I'm not going to go into that here, because I'll lose my track. But... I would have thought it was okay to do that if it was going to stop the hip, the Civil War from happening or going back and killing Hitler and all of his, you know, merry men. <laughs> well, they sure didn't seem to care much about killing people and they just thought genetic, you, you, genetics, eugenics was just hunky-dory. They just thought it was fine. I do not. Um, and so I would have thought before I had my spiritual awakening, yeah, sure, great, if it's going to stop it, then let's do that. But since that's happened, I have a different view. I think, well, I believe that we have made prior contractual engagements, engagements, we have made contractual engagements prior to our birth and where, wherein, we sort of plot the course of our lives and search bar, soul contracts. I'm not going to explain all that in detail. Search bar, soul contracts. But basically, once we have done that, when we incarnate into our lives, we have already agreed. There's an, um, we've, there's a bit of complicity to everything we all do. You know, and it's not like we're unaware of it, even once we're, you know, incarnate, because we have a higher selves, we have a collective consciousness. So it's not like we're all just bashing around as madly as it seems on the 3D level. 3D, <laughs> that's some more search bar stuff, um, because there's degrees of consciousness and search bar <laughs> but anyway there's a level of complicity to everything that everyone does and that to everything that happens and it's not just people there are animals involved the planet is involved the air earth water fire all of it is involved it's like a whole thing search bar <laughs> and um since i've become aware of this I'm not as disturbed when there's, like, a lot of death 
that happens either through acts of God or acts of man. Um, I have the capacity, of course, to be sad and to be horrified. But if you know about the Matrix and how it relates to all this other stuff I'm always saying to search bar, then you'll also understand that <clears throat> when you know about the level of complicity and you know about why the Matrix is a thing actually in life, because I'll say it many times when I do this, media tells us, because when we're born, we forget that we've made these prior engagements. And so we have these films that <clears throat> on one level are there to remind us, like, you know, you're here doing this, but you're ba you're playing a role. You're part of a whole tapestry, which is why you live. We live in each other's worlds, or the worlds. Our worlds are our own, but other people also live in them, and also they coincidentally have their own worlds that we are all living. I mean, <laughs> I know it gets all complicated and woven to death, but that's the way I really think it is. And so that's why I say we have these experiences and they do affect us, but it's not, we're, we're having them to have the feelings because it is not our whole existence, our entire existence, like before we're born and then we're born and then we live life and then we die and then after we die we review that life and we either okay I'm getting into complex stuff that I don't want to get into but take anything you could out of what I just said and feed it into your search bar see what you come up with but anyway it's like we came here to experience these things and to have all these worlds to live in, live in and blend in with each other. And so what I'm getting at is because there is this level of complicity and level of knowledge on another uh, level of consciousness that we all have, um, I now don't think it's such a hot idea to go back in time and start, like, pulling at threads or removing bits of the cloth because they are there for a reason people like you know made contractual agreements to go here and do this and experience being this horrible Hitler person or this wonderful Gandhi person you know but all persons are not all great all the time or all horrible all the time I mean I think any of us could attest to that so it, this film just kind of uh, made me realize that, oh, wow, I don't really think that way anymore. Like, I don't think the solution is necessarily to go back and stop Hitler in World War II. Like, maybe all that stuff has happened for a reason, you know, <laughs> search bar stuff. And so, but in the movie, they want to go and... They're going, there are the murders that happen. A spoiler, I always spoil. Should have put that on my little sign. Maybe I'll just flash it again at the end or something. Or, and I'm telling you, I will spoil. So <laughs> beware. <laughs> uh, they want to, the murders in the movie end up being to, they're part of a chain of events and they want to stop what is trying to roll up in the film and which uh, is coincidentally in this fictional 80s time is also something that's happening right now which if you see it you will understand there are like white supremacists they're trying to start a race war they even talk about trying to stop these people from starting a second civil war and so in the film they don't take my view of wait don't go in and start messing with people's fates and the face of everyone because it's an interwoven cloth and event or series of events or you know that's kind of a hard thing to character characterize characterize good grief I can't wait till I get my teeth fixed it's a hard thing to characterize 
characterized? Yeah. Because who thinks of that? Who thinks that way? I mean, unless you're, like, aware of it and you think about it, then it doesn't occur to you. It didn't occur to me before I had my spiritual awakening and I started looking at all this woo-woo stuff and connecting it to things in my life that are unusual, that were unusual, and I had no explanation for it, and I just kind of had to say, well, well, that happened. <laughs> you know, now I have, you know, more uh, sort of instruction as to what the heck's been going on with me and everybody else, really. But the movie was very enjoyable. I mean, I love action films. I love sci-fi. I, I love the, you know, the star, even though she was a murderer, looked a little like me when I was a punk rocker. And my hair was much shorter, or even three years ago when I wasn't letting it grow because I didn't want to deal with it. Um, and it did have, uh, sorry about that, a aside from all the murders, basically, that happened, even it was sort of like Hitler and their eugenics with the, we're just going to get rid of the people that we deem, you know, inessential or defective or whatever, like, your decision to go around killing people you think is the smart thing to do, and you think they're defective? <laughs> Raspberry. So, opinion. <laughs> sorry about that. Well, no, I'm not sorry. That's why I'm doing this. If you don't like it, you can just leave. I don't mean to be hostile. I'm just saying, you don't like it, sign out. Sign me off. Shut me down. Whatever. Go away. You don't have to listen to me, <laughs> okay? Uh, but, blah, blah, blah. I, you know, I mean, it did end up being basically a happy ending. The protagonist, the main protagonist, and then the, 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 the uh, main characters, the, the second character, I've, there's a name, I, it just escapes me at the moment, but the co-star, jeez Louise, the main co-star... And the featured actress, uh, they all end up having a link. And everybody goes through a lot of stuff. There's a lot of, like, everybody thinking the protagonist is nuts because of the things he's talking about. And it just works out that there's a burst of activity. He's in the middle of it. He doesn't completely understand what's going on. The person that he's fighting in the movie is some kind of scary alien. He doesn't know what they're doing. It takes a while for everybody to understand each other and work through their crap. And it's the intervals in between that make it hard for the main character. Well, actually, pardon me. It makes it hard for the main character and, you know, the next level person down. or And the whole rest of the cast, because unfortunately, a bunch of them get killed off. But hey... <laughs> Fiction. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm making it clear, but I, I did enjoy it. I did find it very uh, thought-provoking, and I always like that. I think that everything should give us pause to think because it all ends up applying somehow to our reality. Ooh, lofty. <laughs> okay, uh... So, uh, I guess that's it. Anything else? I wanted to talk a little bit about... Oh, yeah. So, I had done a, a couple of videos about Thanksgiving and, like, the preparation of my meal. And, uh, I was going to have a third installation... Which, you know, that may still happen because we have modern refrigeration. I do have most of the stuff from the meal that I was preparing on hand, and I usually do. I just, um, I have what I used to call when I cleaned houses a, an old lady kitchen, which was, I don't have all my medicine on the counter in there, and of course, because I don't take a lot of the stuff that I was prescribed, you know, I have some health issues 
but I just don't take a lot of it anymore because I think a lot of it has a bunch of... Well, you've seen the commercials for prescription medications. It's got more side effects than benefits, and it's scary. And, you know, come to find out just bad things about Big Pharma. I don't need you, anybody, I don't think, needs to rock a search bar to know about that stuff. Think opiate crisis, you know? They just do a lot of hinky things to the drugs, and... I just don't want to take as much as I was taking, so I, they don't take up that much space. But in this place where I'm living now, the kitchen has very little counter and cabinet space. And so a lot of, you know, the stuff that I have ends up on the counter, taking up a lot of space. And when I cleaned houses, old lady ca counters were a pain in the butt because they'd be all sticky and crummy like mine is and because they had a maid coming in they didn't clean them I don't know if they cleaned them if they didn't have a maid coming in but it was not my favorite thing to do because you had to get behind all the crap on the counter and you had to clean every appliance and you know, it's just like, oh man, that's gonna take up some of the, so much of the uh, limited amount of time that I have to be here. I just hated those things, but you know, I figured out a way to do it, to do it well, and make them happy, and make my bosses happy, make me happy to figure out a way to hurry up and do it, so I could hurry up and get the hell out of Dodge, because I would have two or three other places to go do in a, like I said, limited amount of time. So, but yeah, I have the old lady counter now. <laughs> And uh, I don't know that it's so much because I'm a old lady. It's most, mostly because uh, I just don't have enough room to put stuff. And it's just, I mean, I got shelves out into the next room. And it's, I'm, I'm, I want more space or less stuff. I got to figure out how to work that. And why did I bring that up? Oh, I, so yeah, uh, I did finish the meal and... Uh, Eventually, I'll have it again because, I, like I said, I still have the stuff. And then maybe I'll show you the entire finished product. But you, you don't really need to see another preparation of stuffing, <laughs> you know? I think once the whole holiday period is over, you will be stuffed with seeing stuffing. And that's basically what I had left. So, uh, But there was something else I wanted to say. Oh! Another reason there is no space is because, you know, I get, I got, I went grocery shopping and there were some things I needed. And once again, they had to go somewhere. So I couldn't make more stuff. And I was kind of like waiting and waiting and waiting to finish that little bit of Thanksgiving business. And then finally I said, you know, forget it. The terrain keeps changing. I don't even feel like in that mood anymore. So if anyone was interested, that is why that stopped. And uh, I think that's it. I just wanted to get one in, a video, get a little one under my belt for people to watch. And now I'm going to go. Oh, if you can hear what's tinkling away in the background, it is... Oh, heck. It's 528 hertz. Manifest all that is good. Zen Life Relax. Very enjoyable channel. Pleasant tones. Okay, did I do everything? I think so. Oh, yeah. I guess, I don't know. I'm not going to go ahead and add the characters for people. That's what Google and IMDB is for. Or Netflix, if you have it. A lot of people just have it. So, I recommend that uh, film, though. And it's a Netflix original, once again, In the Shadow of the Moon, starring Boyd Holbrook and Michael C. Hall of Dexter fame, and featuring Cleopatra Coleman. Oh, that's what I was going to do. Well, maybe I'll add it in the information box, the supporting cast of dead people. <laughs> okay. Um, that's it. Thank you and good night.